Be sure to check out my other step-by-step -step videos on how to draw the hand. All you need to do is click on an image to go to them. This video will give you step-by-step -step instruction on how to draw hands folded in prayer. But we're not going to just draw any pair of praying hands. We're going to recreate Albrecht Dorer's study of praying hands in pencil. If you're nervous to attempt one of the most spectacular drawings of the Northern Renaissance and one of the most famous drawings of all time, have no fear. You will not need to rely on divine intervention. As I was saying, I got your back. Just hit the link in the video description and you'll be taken to a page with text and photo resources to help you along. Are you ready? Let's get started. Step 1. Draw the three shapes that you see. The bottom shape resembles a bowl, the middle shape is trapezoidal, and the top shape is triangular. Together, these shapes resemble a Christmas tree. Step 2. Add the double shape for the thumbs. Notice that the closer thumb is the exact height of the trapezoid. Step 3. Add the palm of the right hand. Step 4. Add the fingers of the right hand. Step 5. Add the shapes at the bottom. Step 6. This is a tricky and important step. We are carving out fingers. Use the lines left from previous steps as comparison points. Notice that the fingertips go above and outside the triangle shape. Also, notice where the lines that separate the fingers end in the trapezoid shape. Here's a close-up. Step 7. Add the details on the right hand. Here's a close-up. Step 8. Now we're going to put in the shapes for shading. Do not feel the pressure to be exact. If it's slightly different than mine, it is okay. Let's start with the thumb. Add the shadow shapes that you see. Do not press too hard on the pencil. Step 9. Add the shading to the lower part of the left hand. Step 10. Shade the middle of the left hand. Step 11. Shade lightly between the fingers. Step 12. Add the fingernails and the oval shapes at mid-finger. Notice that the oval shapes are not parallel with each other. Step 13. Add the shading to the palm and wrist of the right hand. Step 14. Add the shading to the top of the right hand. Step 15. Shade the fingers of the right hand. Hey, it's Merrill. Welcome to the shading part of the video. Um, I urge you to hit the link in the video description. Uh, I have about uh, 30 slides for you, uh, which will be very helpful for this step. Um, but definitely use the video and those slides together. Um, you're going to notice I I'm doing very little work with the pencil because we already have uh, the shapes for the shades uh, figured out already. So I'm going right in with the blending stump. And you know, you've seen me use a paintbrush before, and you can see me use it again here. I'm choosing to use the blending stump because it's really helpful for me to extend lines and to change, um, you know, to change how uh, the edges of lines are, uh, and that's what I like it for. I'm really softening the edges, and I'm looking at um, my reference picture of uh, Albrecht Dorer's hands, which is, of course, a truly spectacular drawing, uh, and you can find it anywhere on the internet. Uh, in fact, you know what? I'll post it on my um, on my website. You know, so if you hit the link, you'll see that too. Uh, but it really, it, I mean, in order to do this, you have to get the bone structure of the hand right, and that is all about the shadows, uh, very delicate shadows, very delicate highlights. Um, and I'm just doing a layer of covering with the blending stump, and it's very helpful for that. Generally, the uh, well, your right hand side as the drawing moves to the right it's going to be darker um, so you can press a little bit harder and you can use your um, higher number B pencils uh, for those uh, for that side of the hand um, the left hand side is a little bit more challenging you could always butcher a shadow well somewhat um, 
yeah, people tend to lump the shadows together, and you know the best artists. There's subtleties to their shadows, you know, because it's not just one solid tone. But, um, you know, you can butcher a shadow and you can get away with it. Not to say you're going to have the best drawing, but, um, you know, you can get away with it. That's my point here. Highlights, on the other hand, you have to be a lot more careful carving them out. Um, and I'm using both a kneaded eraser and a pencil to do that. Um, you're seeing me switch back and forth right now. Um, the little pencil that I just put down there, that's a 6B pencil. And I'm refining the lines between the fingers. Um, I'm looking at the edges. It's so important to look at the edges. And I'm making sure, just not to, le not to press too hard though, you know, I want to slowly build that up because there's delicate edges right in between. Um, keep in mind one thing. We're doing a pencil drawing, a pencil um, version of the Doro drawing, which was uh, done uh, somewhat pen and ink. Um, you know, there were, there were layers of color laid down, perhaps by watercolor, perhaps by gouache, um, and then there was light uh, you know, pencil hatched over that chalk pencil, perhaps. Um, it's a very different type of drawing than the one that I'm doing, but I figure everybody has pencils at home instead of all of the other fancy art supplies, so um, it's going to be a little bit different, but uh, it, it came out pretty similar. Um, the highlight at the bottom of the hand is going to be very important. Um, th that's the only like chunked highlight that there is, uh, the only real mass uh, that there is of light. But notice that um, the highlights have different, uh, I guess hierarchies would be the word as well. There's the lightest light that you see, and that's um, you know where the bones are starting to protrude from the hand. Um, and also, even in that chunked highlight, right at the bottom of the hand, you know th there's there's several nuances to it. So it's a complex uh, chunk. What can I say? Um, this is optional. Uh, you can add it if you want. I, I just always feel when I'm drawing on white paper uh, that if you don't put the background, uh, if, if you don't tone down the background, um, your highlights are not going to pop. There's some artists that could do that. Uh, I guess I'm not one of them. Oh, here. Here's your first su uh, surprise. Sorry about that. Um, I decided to add the sleeves. Um, you know, usually I do that in the step-by-steps, but if you see them as shapes, if you got this far, it shouldn't be that hard for you. So I apologize for the surprise. I rarely have surprises in my videos, but I guess that's one. Um, that's a slip sheet that I'm using, just so that I don't smudge the drawing. Okay, now um, I, I'm going uh, really delicate, and you saw me pick up that paintbrush. Uh, when I need the delicate shading, uh, or the delicate blending, uh, that's when I use the paintbrush. So I kind of go back and forth. Some teachers don't teach, um, you know, to use either one of them, you know, to just do the whole entire thing in cross hatching. Uh, I was taught the same. I, I think you could get some pretty sophisticated results uh, using both, and I think it's easier. Some drawings I do, I do not use them, but um, on this one I'm choosing to. Now, notice, uh, compared to the background, um, now you really see those highlights popping because I darkened the background. All I did was I did some hatching with the pencil, and then I smudged it with the uh, paintbrush. Nice and easy. Um, don't, well, I should have said this at the beginning of the video, but from now on, don't use printer paper. Uh, printer paper is very smooth. Uh, you're not going to get the same ability to add highlights and shadows on that. Uh, it'll, like, rub right off in a second. Um, drawing paper has tooth to it. It has texture. Um, it's a lot easier to do it with uh, drawing paper. Now you're seeing me build up the bones and the veins in the hand. Um, don't try to copy off mine like exactly. Mine is not exactly like Albrecht Durer's, but I know the anatomy of the hand. Um, I guess I haven't done a tutorial on that for you guys yet, but just go by observation. The more you look, the closer you're going to get to it. So make sure you look. Um, edges. I want to stress the edges. So important. Some edges are hard and dark. You know, 6B pencil. And some edges are, yeah, they're not really hard. They're softer edges, they're lighter. You have to look at what you are observing, and that's your challenge for this one. If you made it this far, really look at my final drawing, look at uh, Dora's final drawing, and, you know, 
look for the edges. You know, notice the differences in the edges. That's what really makes a drawing. Okay? And finishing touches, um, I'm, I'm pressing lighter at this point. All the big decisions have been made. Now I just need to blend it together so that it doesn't look choppy. I'm going to do an extended shading tutorial for this video, I decided. Um, that's probably going to come out tomorrow, um, or, you know, very soon. Um, it, it should break this down even further. Um, look at my website as well, because uh, each everything that I basically said uh, for the shading part of this video um, is said there in steps. So that's a really great resource. I know that's like the third time I've said that, but... Um, you know, I think it's going to be very helpful. So anyway, thank you so much for uh, watching this video. Um, you know, I hope that it helped you. And um, you know, click the links uh, that are that are right here uh, to see some of my other hand drawing videos. Thanks for watching.